Hey guys, Flatpak Effects here. Now after a lot of requests from the user community, we're finally diving back in with not just one, but two new Vox videos. Let's go. Now this video is made possible by today's sponsor, Script Fighter. If you want an easy and simple way to create subtitles just like these, all without leaving After Effects, then you need SF Subtitles. I can copy and paste the script I want to subtitle straight into SF Subtitles text panel. I can then quickly format the script into blocks, depending on how I'd like the subtitles to display. I then choose my font and hit create subtitles and SF subtitles will automatically create a new layer with all of my subtitles on the timeline. Now what I love most is it pre-generates the keyframes which makes it super easy to adjust when I want my subtitle to appear. With any of the keyframes selected, I can easily change the text and language of the subtitles. Another handy feature is the fact I can import and export subtitles in SRT format all within the tool. Now, if you value your time, then use the special link down below to download SF subtitles now, which will save you a lot of time in this subtitling process. Now the first effect I'm going to break down is this map effect, and you can start by downloading these three files here from the description below. Now with my map layer select, I'm just going to create a new composition. And the first thing we want to do is take our layer, come up to layer and down to pre-compose. Then I'm going to take that layer again and I'm going to pre-compose it again. Now I'll explain why in a minute. Now the third composition is where we're going to define the colors. So with that layer selected, I just come up to effect, down to generate and add the fill. Now you can change that color to be whatever whatever you like here. But what I want to do is define these parts of the map to be a different color. So I can simply duplicate this map so it's on top and I'm just going to change the color so I can see what I'm doing here. And I'm just simply going to draw a really quick mask that goes around the edge of my map here. Now I've already removed the borders here, just making it a little bit easier for you guys at home. And there's a number of different ways we could end up masking this, but I just find that using the pen tool is probably a little bit easier and faster. And I'm just gonna draw another quick mask over here as well, just defining another part of the map. So you could go through and define any number of those parts and change the color however you like. Now, once we're happy with that, we're gonna go one composition back. So we've got this map here, which is the pre-composition of that composition we were just working on. And I'm going to drag in the paper background so it sits behind my layer like this. Now we want the paper background to come through in our map. So what we do is we come down to toggle switches and I'm going to change the mode to be overlay. Now to retain the colors, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that map three times like this, just to help really bring out that color that we want but it also keeps a lot of that detail that we wanted from our background image. Now, if you wanted less or more of that effect, you could just turn on more or less of those layers. Now, back in the main composition, we want to drag in another paper background so it sits over the top. And we're also going to drag in this layer here, which is basically a water animation that is already pre-matted. So by that, I mean that it's already black and white. And we can use this information by dragging it on top to create a mat which then reveals the map of the USA. So what I do is I just hit this little toggle down here to bring up my modes and I want to change the track map to be Luma Invert. Now what that's going to do is use that map to reveal that layer in that animation that we want. So now we have that water layer revealing our map in this really cool way. Now for the last part of this animation, we've got this text effect here. So the way we create this is we first right click and create a new text layer. And you can just type out your text however you want. You can choose whatever font you'd like for this. If you want to follow exactly what I'm doing, I'm using this Helvetica font over here, and these are the settings that you can match. And I've just roughly positioned it here in the middle. Now the next part is just to create that box that sits behind. 
So to do this, I'm just gonna make sure I have nothing selected. I'm gonna use my shape tool and I'm going to select a yellow color, something like this, and just draw out a simple box that sits behind this layer. So I'm just gonna drop this down behind. So we now have that sitting behind a text layer here. And we want to animate this in two different parts. So we want the first half of the text to pop up on its own, and then we want to animate the second part. So I'm gonna have my text come in about here. So I'm just gonna drag those two layers over. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this layer, I'm just going to cut that by hitting Command X or Control X. And then we're just going to focus on the first part of our text. So I'm going to hit P on my keyboard and create a position keyframe. Just go across a little bit here and create another position keyframe. And with that first one selected, I'm going to drag this down. So we just have a very simple animation up of the text like this. Now what we want our background to do is just to be the same length or the same width as that text as it's animating in. We're going to hit S on the keyboard and create a scale keyframe pretty much as that text has finished animating in. We're gonna go across a little bit on the timeline here and create another scale keyframe because we want it to animate out to this position. So we're going to start it shorter and then animate it out as the second block of text is animating in. So with my first bit selected, I need to move this anchor point across here. So I want to hit Y on my keyboard to bring up the pan behind tool and move this anchor point over to this position. Now I can move this layer or the end of this layer across. And what you're going to see is it's going to pop up like this and then animate across in one movement. Now, as this one's coming across like this, we're just gonna move these keyframes slightly back here to delay that animation. We want our second layer of text to come in. What we're gonna do is take that text layer, we're just going to duplicate it by hitting Control D or Command D on the keyboard. We're just gonna bring the start of this one across. We're gonna bring up those keyframes and I want to move this across here. And then I can double click that and paste in that second bit of text. Now we want this one to come in a little bit later. So we want this one to be a little bit slower in the second part. And I'm gonna select all of those keyframes here and move it back so it lines up nicely in that original position. And as we play through, you can see we have that effect of them popping up. Now the last little part of this is we want to hide that text when it first appears. So we don't want it to appear here. We only want to appear when it's on that box. Now this can easily be done by taking our background layer and duplicating it. So I'm hitting Command D or Control D on the keyboard, depending on what you're using. I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard and delete those scale keyframes because we want it to stay the length that it is. Then I'm going to drag it up above my layer of text here. And then with that layer of text, we want to change the track map to be alpha map. And what this does, it hides the text as it's animating in. So all we need to do is just duplicate that layer again, bring it up above our map effect, which is our second layer of text and do the same thing. We just create an alpha map and there you go. We have the finished effect. Now I love this effect because it's just really simple and has a lot of impact. Now, if you're new here, maybe consider subscribing to this channel where I teach you all about how to unleash your creativity so you can create better and more engaging video effects. So let's move over to our second effect here. Now we don't need any files for this one, so I'm just gonna right click, create a new composition. Now this can be whatever size you want here. I'm just gonna hit okay. Now the first thing I want to do is just right click, create a new solid, and this is going to be our background. So I'm gonna make this a lighter gray here, just so it's not black. Then we want to create the little circles or little gray circles. So we do this by coming up here and holding down this to create, to select the ellipse tool. And we want to change the fill so it has no fill. And we want to change this stroke to be about 20 pixels. 
and the color can be whatever you like. I'm using this color here if you want to use this exact same color that I'm using. And whilst holding shift on my keyboard, I'm just going to draw out a rough circle here to something about that sort of size. Now you can go ahead and adjust the thickness of that stroke depending on the exact look you're going for. Now to create multiple layers of this, it's a really simple built-in feature into After Effects and it's called the Repeater. So we can access it by coming down here to our shape layer, down to contents and under this where it says add, we just add a repeater. Now repeater just simply repeats or copies that layer as many times as you like. So I can drag this up here to create many copies and I'm also going to offset it so it sits in the center of my layer. Now I need to spread these circles apart. So I come down to the transform properties and you can see as I drag away on this position property here, we get more or less space. So I'm gonna drag mine up to about here. So that's about 319, but that can be depending on what the look you're going for. And then we need to duplicate this on top. So what we do is we create another repeater for the repeater. So we create another repeater here. Now that's duplicating that layer, but for this repeater, we're going to move it up. So instead of moving it across, we're now moving it up or down like this. Also going to add in another few copies here and adjust my offset. I'm also gonna move them slightly closer together and I want to offset them so that we end up with this position here. So the second layer down is going to be offset and then the third row is going to be in line again. So we, we're trying to evenly space them apart. Now again, you can go through and mess around with any of those settings to get the, the distance or the spacing that you desire for your background. But we're going to move on to the circles. So making sure nothing is selected here, I'm going to come back up to the ellipse tool. And this time I want to add a fill. So I'm going to give this a yellowy color here and I want to remove the stroke entirely. And for this one, I'm just going to draw out a circle which, which roughly fills over the top of one of these existing circles. Now you can position that circle wherever you want, or that first one that you want to appear. And the whole idea is we want to duplicate this into another shape. So we don't leave this layer that we're working on. What we're going to do is take that ellipse and we're just simply going to duplicate it. So now we have two circles circles one on top of the other. With the bottom one selected, we want to move that or animate that one across. So I'd use the drop down here and come down to the transform properties for that ellipse. And I'm going to create a position keyframe there. I'm going to move along on my timeline here about a second or so, and then move this one across to whichever position you desire. Now keep in mind, you can take this second lay here because they're individual circles and change the color. So I could come up here and make this one, say a slightly darker yellow or an orangey sort of color here. Now at the moment, they just appear one from behind the other and it looks okay, but we want it to actually look like it's growing out of that layer. Now this is a really, really simple little trick and we do it by first applying a blur to this layer. So I'm gonna come over to my effects and presets and I want to add a Gaussian blur to that shape layer. And what I'm going to do is drag this up to be about 40 here to something like this. And then for the second part, what I want to do is add a choker to that layer. So I'm going to add a simple choker by dragging it onto that layer. And by dragging this choker up, you can see we start to create that look that we're going for. Now I don't need to drag it all the way up. About 30 looks about right, but you can adjust it as you go. And you can see we now end up with that transition of the two layers. Now from this part, all I'm going to do is just take my shape layer and just scale it up very slightly here just because the choker will reduce the overall size of that shape. So as I drag this up very slightly, 
I can just reposition it here. Now if I hit U on the keyboard, I can bring up those keyframes and just readjust that second layer by moving it back into that position. And there we go, we have our finished effect. Now if I wanted to do this a third time, all we have to do is just duplicate that process again. So what I can do is come down here, take that layer that comes out here, and I'm just going to duplicate that again. And with the bottom one selected, I'm going to come down here to where it says the position properties. And it's important that we don't adjust those position properties because we need it to be moving with those layers from above. I'm going to create another position here after a little bit of a gap so it stays where it is. And then I want to move it out to this position down here. So it's moving out on an angle. So you can see, this is the effect that we end up with. Now as it's moving further and further out, I want to make this a slightly darker color again. So it's slightly getting darker as it's moving along. And there you go, there's pretty much the finished effect. Now if you want to go through and retime any of these, you can just move these keyframes closer together to speed it up or move them further apart to slow that down. And another simple little trick here is that now that you've created three of these, you don't need to go through and animate all of them to be exactly the same. We can just take this layer and just duplicate the whole thing. And now we have access to that layer and all of its shapes. So we can move it over here to a new position, say. Or what we could do is actually rotate this to a new position here. And there you go, we have the finished effect. Now, if you like this Vox animation breakdown and you wanna watch more videos just like this, you can click on this playlist here on the side of screen to watch more Vox style videos. Thanks very much for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video.